What the hell's a Bengali? Carol will research it first thing in the morning, sir. It's late, so we couldn't get a hold of her tonight. Christ, guys, it was a rhetorical question. It's obviously some kind of nationality. Yeah, Indian, I think. Well, actually, Tony, it's not Indian. That's what they were saying. Travis kept correcting George. I mean, they're obviously different nationalities. It's different, but similar. No, 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 completely different. All right, guys, I got it. What's the Bengali's name? Jala... Jaladar, sir. What have we got on him? Nothing. Never heard of him before. Damn. Chief, there's no way they pull this off. Travis Miller's a small-time crook who made big news on a lucky job. Look, he's conning the Tuttle family. One of the brothers... Norman Tuttle. ...is already hip to his act, and there's no way that a prominent New York family risks it all on an impossible heist just for the fun of it. There's no way. They've got money. They can finance the whole operation. In one month? I'm calling the mayor just in case. Stay on Miller's ass and keep following the Tuttles. It's not right that he should be living in that house. They never should have accepted him with open arms. Get going. Travis Miller is actually Travis Tuttle. Younger brother to George, older brother to Norman. Erica Tuttle is the youngest sibling. Junior year of high school, Travis struck out on his own. He left for the West Coast. Two years later, he emerges as Travis Miller, president of some non-existent charity group, stealing thousands from the Hampton set. He gets caught. The press does a number on him. And he runs home to his family. But Norman doesn't believe it's his younger brother, thinks he's a fraud. Right. Yep. But George, the oldest, a bored playboy with a broken home and an endless bank account, buys it. And decides to bankroll his younger brother's scheme. So who's the Indian? Uh, he's Bengali, sir. Frank, we talked about this. Bengalis are Indian. Yes, Tony, we did talk about this. Bengalis live in India, but they're not Indian. It's a different thing. It's in India! It Boys, enough! Who fucking cares? I'm calling the mayor. We nail him at Grand Central on February 7th. On February 8th, you two get your mugs on the front page of the Times for bringing down a couple of spoiled millionaire brats. Our cover is blown because of the mayor's fucking daughter? Boss, our cover isn't blown. Lola had it all wrong. The mayor was wrong. What are you talking about? Look, we rigged the whole house, not just the phones. The job is still on and we know exactly when and where it's gonna happen. Good. All right. We're still a go. What? Oh, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir? I understand, sir. Thank you, sir. That was the mayor? What's going on? Boys, we better hope the raid tomorrow goes as planned. What do you mean? The mayor's got a team of Tuttle attorneys on his ass who are about to take us to court on a whole slew of charges, not the least of them being an illegal wiretap. So we need to have one of the Tuttles at the scene tomorrow. What we need is a confession. The Bengali's our guy. All right, get the boys ready. Tomorrow's gonna be a big day. What? The FBI, what do they want? Yeah, put them through. I don't like the smell of this. Shh, keep it quiet, Tony. Uh, Tuttles, huh? Yeah, we've been tracking Travis Miller, AKA Travis Tuttle, ever since he took refuge in their Park Avenue palace. You've been tracking him for years? What gives? Fine. I don't like it, but we can use all the help we can get. We head out of here tomorrow at 6 a.m. Uh, see you then. So? The Tuttles aren't as squeaky clean as the Times would have you believe. The Feds have been trying to pin them for years. Embezzlement, tax fraud, money laundering. And now, art theft. Looks like it's promotion time for you, Chief. Man, I don't count your chickens yet. See you tomorrow, bright and early. Jesus Christ! Turn the radio on, Tony. What the hell did we do wrong? How in Mother Mary's radio. name?
fanfare at Grand Central Station marks the arrival of Leonardo da Vinci's masterwork, The Mona Lisa, in New York City, the greatest city in the world. Over half a million people viewed the work in D.C. during its month on display. Hey, I want to hear the rest of that. Screw it. What is there to hear? All right, look, guys. Something went wrong. Maybe they got spooked. Maybe you guys were sloppy and they knew the house was rigged and they're playing games with you. Where the hell do you get off? You guys screwed up just as bad as we did. Did we really screw up? The Mona Lisa is safe and sound. Except now I owe the mayor an explanation as to why he just spent a bundle of taxpayer dollars on wiretaps and overtime for a crime that never happened. After that, I'm going home. What do we do next? Nothing. It's over. Pull the bugs out of the house, untap the phones, lose the tails. Chief. Now, Tony. Fitzpatrick. Unless you and the FBI need something else, I've got to clean this mess up and go back to the business of protecting the citizens of this fine city from real criminals. I got everything. Sorry about this, boys. This makes us all look bad. Get me the mayor.